Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a market wrap for uh, Wednesday, January 16th, 2019. Uh, this one should be pretty brief. Uh, not a whole lot new to report. You know, S&P or the SPY was up only uh, about uh, not even a quarter percent today. Uh, a couple things to note that uh, are worth doing the video and doing an update. Uh, we finally have kissed that 50 on the SPY. Remember the SPY or S&P 500 tracking ETF? or the S&P 500 was the last of the uh, major indexes that I follow to to actually hit its 50 day. Uh, so now there's no one business, unfinished business there. Uh, and if anything, the SPY is the closest thing to the stock market or as far as indexes go. You have uh, diversity among many different sectors, you know, pretty representative of the economy. QQQ, on the other hand, although it's usually my preferred trading proxy from trading the indexes or futures, uh, the NASDAQ 100, uh, I jokingly refer to as, as QQQ as a tech fund with an Amazon kicker because it's 60% technology weighted or weighted, you know, 60% in the tech sector, give or take. And you don't have certain key sectors in the economy like financials. Today, financials were, you know, very strong, uh, some earnings, uh, at least initially out of the gate. Uh, so um, that's why QQQ is not really uh, accurate or, you know, very representative of the overall uh, U.S. economy, if you will. But there it is. So SPY hit that 50, reversed right off it. You can see that. And we zoom in here and printed a nice little uh, gravestone doji. That's this candlestick here. They're potential topping candles. Well, what you want to see anytime you get a single candle like that, you want to see a follow-up to the downside. A red candle, if we gap down below it, all the better. Uh, so those are things to look for right there. Tomorrow would be a follow-through. And I'm going to get to the 60-minute charts in a second and tell you that it'll mesh. We're still dancing right on those trend lines I've been talking about now for weeks. Um, and uh, any more downside from here, then they looks like they'll break. So that's SPY. Let's just run through them all real quick. QQQ. Uh, let's give you that QQQ. There's your gravestone doji as well. And Q's just above the 50. But again, you know, these are not hard lines. More important than the uh, the 50 days, in my opinion, really, let me jump back to SPY real quick, are these key resistance levels that we're at. Uh, remember, this was, uh, this had contained uh, the, this, this corrective phase here, we had the move off the highs back there, uh, in last quarter. And we had, you know, look, you can see it here, a big sideways trading range for a while, a couple big rips and dips down within this boxed range. That was the support right there. It was also the support on spy and everything else. And once that support gave way, you had the waterfall sell off. So on a scale one to 10, that's got to be close to a 10 on a significant support level. And the way technical analysis works, support once broken becomes resistance. And the more significant the support was before, then the more significant and more likely that level is to come in and act as resistance. It's as simple as that. So now, yeah, are we above it a little bit? That doesn't matter at all. We're slightly above it. Remember, we've seen a huge volatility in recent months. The VIX has fallen quite a bit, and volatility has abated quite a bit, but it's still relatively high. Uh, and so it's more than normal. In fact, it's, it's, it's to be expected that when you have high volatility, you overshoot uh, support and resistance levels by a little bit. So again, you have to give it a little margin of error. You want to see this level, you know, for the bullish case, you want to see this level put clearly in the rear view mirror. Um, and then you can say that level safely been taken out. Um, we'll talk about some of my long-term targets here in a minute. Let me just wrap up the other uh, major indexes there. So there's QQQ again. Uh, that's where the waterfall selling started a little bit above there, popped through big time the other day, but really no follow through today. Um, virtually, you can see we closed flat 0.001%. Gravestone Doji as well, just above the 50. Uh, today looked like the algos had some fun. Algos are the uh, you know, algorithmic trading programs. You can see they popped it at the open. Uh, this is the dashed yellow line here, right here. That shows you yesterday's close. So what we had at the open is a very sharp rip up in about the first half hour of trading, followed by an equally sharp dip. Uh, so this is when the machines come out and play. They had fun. They 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 ramped it up, uh, turned it around right there, and just took it all back almost perfectly. And look at look at how QQQ traded today. I mean, if you tell me this isn't uh, program trading coming in again, that dotted line there that was the close. So they took it down. They just kept dancing on that level and parked it right about yesterday's close today. Uh, so just interesting how how well that uh, level acted as support today. So that's just intraday on a one minute chart.
Let's look at a few more things here. Let's go down the line. We covered the two big large cap indexes I like to follow, QQQ and SPY. Let's look at mid caps. There's MDY, the mid cap ETF. Um, and you can see the 50 day right there just taken out today, but we closed right about on it. And when I zoom in, virtually right on it, give or take. But again, more importantly, in my opinion, than, than any one moving average is significant price resistance. So you can see on the chart here, uh, the blue line, it was res resistance back there. It was support that contained the February lows, that pullback. It contained two different days. We kissed that level right here uh, back in late October, it looks like. Uh, and then we contained that level contained support there for several days. And then finally, just like everything else I just showed you, QQQ and SPY, once it broke, it gave up the ghost, and now we're back at that level now. So again, um, you know, my story hasn't changed for days now. You know, we or weeks. Uh, we were right below that level before. We're now we're right on it, but we have not taken it out with conviction. Uh, anything's possible. It does show that the market's been very resilient coming up here and and holding up, holding its own. But I still favor um, a at least a pullback here. Uh, for you know, quick tactical trade, three to five percent is now what I'm looking for, and then leaning for more upside uh, in the coming weeks here so far. And finally, IWM small cap ETF, same story, um, just one heck of a you know a former support zone, support once broken becomes resistance, and we're smacked now. We hit the top of that resistance zone today. Um, very still in within close proximity to the 50 day PPO is still down in bearish territory. And so, uh, that's, that's what I'm looking at, uh, is the markets at resistance. Now, now let's go to the support part of it. Yesterday I posted an update, you know, mentioning the markets were sandwiched between support and resistance. This is ES, the S and P 500 E mini futures. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time talking about it because I've covered this chart so much recently. Uh, yes, ES is just hugging that line uh, like a sailor overboard clinging to a life preserver, just hugging it, doesn't really have any oomph left in it. It's not going down, um, and it is going up, but ever so slightly. You can't even look at these candles. You can't even see the candles anymore. Um, this is what we had before when we had these big intraday moves. So volatility is compressing, uh, and it's these divergences that are still very much intact, and uh, that's it. Nothing else more to say. Uh, support is support until unless broken. And what you want to see is a solid break on both ES here as well as uh, NQ, which we'll get to right now. NQ, 60-minute chart. Let's zoom in, take it in tighter. There you go. Uh, there's the trend line off the uh, December 24th lows. Pretty well defined, and we closed right on it. We just kissed it. Uh, looks like we're kissing it right now after the market closed. You know, the NQ is still trading. Um, big, you know, divergences, everything else. So uh, there's the line that I must have did in yesterday's video, looking for a four point, uh, four point uh, something, about a four percent drop, give or take. So let's say again, we're looking about a three to five percent pullback is what I think is likely here in the uh, coming days but again until we get that sell signal i know i'm hearing a lot of frustration uh you know if you're short or waiting to short you just have to be patient um and you know chasing longs now uh, although i do think there's more upside in the coming days to uh, coming weeks let's say um i just it's just not objective to go long um, while the markets are near term uh, overbought uh, at resistance. It's as simple as that. In fact, we closed out, you know, another one of our long trades today, KRE. Uh, we hit our second target today. That's the regional bank ETF. Again, I said the, um, the banks were strong uh, on some earnings results today. Here's XLF. Uh, XLF, now the, and the KRE are the regional banks. That's the one I opted. I figured there'd be a little more bang for the buck in the regionals. I'd like the charts, a lot of those. Um, but I also mentioned this was another one you could have taken as well. Uh, and XLF has been strong, but you can see where it's at. Now, XLF is a pretty significant component. It has a pretty decent weighting in the S&P 500. And what I'm going to do for right now is show you, I'm going to draw a line here. Well, let me just hit all the reactions. So what I'm looking at is I'm showing you how this trend line is validated. I'm looking at all these reactions here. 
there was a lot of downward velocity there. This is what I call a momentum fueled overshoot. You have a near vertical plunge, you're going to overshoot resistance by a hair and then snap back above it, or support, I should say, which we did. But so far, there's one, two, three, four uh, reactions. And this is going back two years. And then boom, once we broke it, the waterfall selling, and now we've come back to that level. So yes, a lot like I just showed you on SPY, IWM, QQQ, etc. So it's the same story. Uh, if they happen to power up through this resistance, again, I'd be surprised but not shocked. Uh, next resistance, I can tell you right now, and I really shouldn't be covering this one. This is sector analysis, but uh, I'll just kind of kind of goes into my thinking on the broad market this is what it had a lot of these sectors coming up to uh, resistance as well as a broad market so i just added a line there i certainly see reactions at 25.93 and um then again at 26 29 and that is what i call a resistance zone when i have two um you know resistance levels in close proximity and uh and then beyond that you're talking about 2691 to 2670 maybe a little bit above there it just i guess the point i'm trying to make here is there is a lot of significant resistance overhead so as i've said before uh i think the easy money's been made i talked about an explosive rally imminent being imminent at this point when we're heading into christmas eve um and that is the explosive rally and uh, I believe that's it. I, so I think the easy, quick money has been made. Um, there might be more to be made there, but I think it, the market will now have to start to have to work. There wasn't a lot of resistance, in other words, until a very significant resistance until we got up to the levels we're at now. And that's the point I've been trying to drive home. All right, well, we'll wrap it up with the S&P 500 chart here. I did have, I was catching up on some private messages today on the site. So um, I think I've now caught up to all those for the last couple of days here. Uh, but somebody was asking me they uh, where, you know, that I had outlined a few weeks back, maybe even before we hit the lows, I was already talking about balance targets, if I'm not mistaken, or was right after either way. But I've mentioned a couple times at uh, about 2,800, give or take, is my my preferred, my uppermost bounce target. And this chart doesn't have everything. Let me just show you what my targets are. Um, it's really a range from about where we are. Uh, and these are the targets I laid out in advance to about where we are up to about 2,800 on the S&P is my bounce target zone. So we're pretty much at the minimum bounce target zone for what I'm treating at this point in time as a bear market rally. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe this market goes on to new highs. But as of now, there is a, a pretty strong evidence, in my opinion, a pretty strong case to be made that this is, uh, you know, this this initial drop off the uh, late in the October so highs was the first wave down in the new bear market. And again, I'll try to stay open minded if, you know, you know, depending on how things look, I think now we'll see uh, whether, you know, how the market acts over the next uh, couple weeks here, maybe a couple months, uh, might be pretty telling. But I just wanted to share that. And I know that's a pretty big range from high to low, you know, from where we're at now up to 2,800, it measures about 7%. Uh, so it's called a fuzzy target. Um, I, I've made my thoughts clear i have been for weeks now that uh, all along you know i expected a uh, you know a pretty strong rally in january and possibly into february so that's still what i'm looking i'm leaning towards this scenario soon get a three to five percent pullback move we need that consolidation this is the only half decent pullback we've had so far right here and um, it would just be very unusual to see the market continue on higher without something at this point especially with all the resistance levels that we're up against so Three to five percent, you know, quick traders, maybe, you know, try to game it. Otherwise, long term stuff, uh, you can continue to hold out. I've, I've mentioned reducing some 401k long term exposure, just booking profits again because the easy money's made. Uh, if we get a decent pullback, I may recycle some of that cash back into longs for the next leg up. We'll see what it looks like if and when it comes, uh, or when it comes. I'll just tell you that whether we go up more or not, there's going to be a decent pullback coming. And uh, that's about it. So I just wanted to mention that there's a lot of uh, uh, levels. Oh, and where I was going with this too is timing of that. Uh, here's what I what I think. Um, again, if the market is, is to head up to 2,800 or so, uh, and assuming that's where it uh, stops, or let's let's just assume that it even gets there. Let's just take it from there. Let's not even talk about a reversal. Uh, I think that would come around mid to late February, call it around February 20th, give or take, 
a couple weeks in either direction. So this is sort of what uh, I'm looking at. Uh, again, to be clear, at this point in time, my most optimistic scenario, and there's a key long-term trend line that comes in just above that. So maybe maybe SPY wants to go and hit that before it comes back. So you can that kind of lays out my intermediate to longer term. We're not even going to start talking about downside targets yet um, because right now, like I said, I'm you know my I'm still looking looking forward at this point in time and have been uh, for for a while now. So that's it. And if you know if we do get a pullback that starts to look like it may be something more, I'll, I'll go over those levels. I've covered the targets that I've looked at. So if my max pullback target is hit and then taken out by quite a bit, we'll see how the charts look. But right now, I just like I said, I think it's too early to start scaling back into or or even um, you know adding back. Uh, swing shorts <clears throat> if you are bearish and think there's another leg down uh, possible that it's not uh, we'll, we'll see I, I just can't make a strong enough case to say all right this is where we should be going back in at least fully short um, but can, even if you scale in here and this plays out you know this could be another month or more of upside and so you'll be you know suffering in both time and price on on short trade so i'd rather sit back and if i have to miss you know miss a turn on the downside and miss the first you know five six seven eight nine percent i doubt it would be that much before jumping in short again fine because if this is a, a you know leg uh, this is just a counter trend rally in a new bear market uh, and you look at the longer term charts there is so much more to come uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, just look at something like this. Let's say we run up to that 200 day and then take another leg down. Um, this is where we're going ultimately before all said and done, I believe, right down about here and maybe more than that. And that'd be about 2150 or so. And that's about another 20 percent below where we are. Or if I didn't know, that's about 20 percent below the uh, 200 day moving average to about 2120. Yeah. So uh, so plenty, plenty of downside left. I'm not in a hurry. Uh, to jump in back short for swing shorts yet yeah, again still focus too many too many longs too much money to be made on the long side right now but as of now we're getting a little frothy and that's why i wanted to point out kre uh, that's why i had that final target there that's why I book profits i'm not extending that trade and we've had some other trades hit recently and uh we'll, we'll we'll take it from here all right let's wrap this one up and again uh let's just watch those futures uh, and uh, we'll, I'll do an update in the morning if there's anything big. But uh, uh, if you don't have a futures account, investing.com will give you free futures charts. You can go there. I recommend create an account. Uh, that way you can save your charts and you can replicate these charts as well. It's NQ and ES. They use uh, different symbols if you're using investing.com. They use for the NASDAQ 100 futures, USTEC. Here, I'll show you. I'll drag this over here. This is what it looks like uh, uh, right there. There's the, this is the, uh, these are the NQ E-minis right there. And these are the ES S&P 500 futures. There's the Russell 2000 futures uh, on investing.com. This has been Randy Finney with the right side of the chart. Hope you enjoyed it.